welcome to Fly East Kitchen. I'm Jessica, your host, and today we are making the breakfast recipe of your dreams. If you've ever been to Panera Bread, I'm obsessed with their egg souffles. They have a cheese one, a spinach and artichoke one. They have one that has some bacon in it, but you know I'm a fool with swine, <laughs> so I don't really touch that one. But honestly, it's just like this little souffle that's packed with so much flavor, so I thought, why not make our own? But of course, we have to add our Fly Eats twist to it. So we're adding some lump crab meat in there. We're going to have hella cheese, okay? I'm sorry for my dairy-free people. This is probably not the recipe for you. <laughs> I just want to give that disclaimer because we're adding the Quattro Formaggi cheese from Trader Joe's. It has Asiago, Fontina, Parmesan. I feel like I'm missing the cheese because it's four and I just said three. I don't know. But we're also adding their cheddar, white cheddar and Gruyere cheese and a little bit of mozzarella. So like I said, the cheese is going to be on a level 100, but it's going to be so yummy with our egg mixture. And we're going to add it into this beautiful um, well, puff pastry so that it's going to bake together and just be the perfect breakfast bite. So you guys, let's go. <laughs> let's get started with this recipe. We're getting started with five eggs at room temperature. That's why you see them a little sweating a little bit. You're gonna add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour as well as one cup of milk. I use almond milk because trust me, we are not lacking in dairy in this recipe. You wanna have a can of your lump crab meat or claw crab meat, whichever you have handy, and a cup of all these cheeses, Gruyere, white cheddar, uh, mozzarella, Asiago, formaggi cheese. It's a, a cheese galore. <laughs> the crescent rolls you can purchase at your local grocery store and just kind of lay them out flat until we're ready to use them as far as the cookware i low-key borrowed my sister's mini cast iron skillet so shout out to her and i also have these aluminum pans because you know what guys we eat with our eyes and so it's beautiful to just have a nice presentation to place our recipe in on medium high heat you want to add in two tablespoons of butter i use vegan butter but you know butter of your butter of your choice is fine you want to get that melted don't burn it because what we're going to do now is basically create a roux. And so I know it might seem weird to make a roux for this egg recipe because that's usually something made with like mac and cheese or like gumbo or whatever. But I promise the roux helps just kind of turn the recipe up even more with that fluffiness and the texture of the souffle that we want. So don't be like me and be stupid and use <laughs> a metal um, whisk into your pan because that ruins the bottom of the pan. But I didn't have a plastic one in hand. And so I did what I I had to do you know you sacrifice for the recipe so you want to go ahead and mix in your flour your butter until it's cooked down just like that and then you're going to add in your one cup of milk and so like i said this process creates a roux that's going to kind of have like a thickening factor that once you add it into your egg mixture y'all it's it's everything so i promise don't skip this you're gonna love this <laughs> for the recipe add in a few seasonings you don't want to overdo it with salt i'll say that because like i've said before cheese has salt in it right so you don't want to over salt anything we can add other seasonings that will make sure the flavor is there so right now I add a little bit of salt some pepper and then you see that beautiful slight thickness you know <laughs> That's the look that you're going for. Once you see that combo is giving you that look, you know you are ready. So once you have your roux ready, you're going to take it off the heat because you want it to cool down. We don't want our eggs to curdle once we add it with the egg, right? So in a large bowl, you're going to add all your eggs. Take all that white stuff. I forgot what it's called, <laughs> but you don't need that. So pull that out and then whisk up your eggs really well because we're going to add in all of the other ingredients. So once it is whisked, you're going to add in that cool down milk mixture. And I mean, this is normal for most people, right? If you're making scrambled eggs, I know a lot of people add milk into their eggs. And so it's kind of that same concept for the fluffiness, except we created the roux with the, um, the flour so that we can have a different texture for this specific souffle. And now the time has come for these cheeses. <laughs> I know it's gonna feel like an abundance of cheeses. Obviously, listen, like I always tell y'all, use your cook stinks, right? So if you don't want that many that much cheese, don't put it. I mean, it's really that simple. I love cheese, and so I'm all the way down for it. So add in your cheese, add in your lump crab, go ahead and whisk that together. It's gonna be hella thick. 
it's exciting just repeating what I did. But once you have that mix and you're going to add in some seasonings. And so you add in, I would say like a teaspoon of paprika, um, some garlic powder. You know, I can't do nothing without garlic. And this is another ingredient that really turns it up. Some chives. That chives is amazing. So add in some chives and mix it together. Grab your puff pastries, and actually this is the perfect time to preheat your oven at 375 because we will be baking our souffles for 25 to 30 minutes at that temperature. When our puff pastry is out of that crescent roll tube, it already has those perforated lines for like croissant making, for instance. So you just want to use your fingers to kind of pull, pull those lines together and to flatten it so that we can have one even layer. And you're going to just cut them to fit the baking dishes that you use. So all of my dishes are pretty much different sizes besides the two aluminum pans are the same and so obviously the one for the cast iron skillet is a little bit larger you want to make sure that you grab some cooking spray some oil a little butter and spray the bottom of your pan before placing your puff pastry in there and then you're going to go ahead and grab your mixture so that you can pour it into your puff pastry so i just use my uh, measuring cup and just put like a cup of each of the mixture into each of the baking dishes it might be a little bit too much but honestly it is enough for me because i like to see an abundance of food even when it's not ready so once it's already in there then you're going to fold over your puff pastry it doesn't have to be perfect if you've ever been to panera then you know every time you have one of these they look completely different it's not like it's all uniformed and that's okay because as long as it tastes great it really doesn't matter so once you have them all folded over, you want to, you want to once again spray over with some cooking oil or cooking spray so they can have that golden brown crust and once you place it in the oven. I do put aluminum foil loosely over it for about 10 minutes so that it can kind of cook so that without burning the top and then you just remove it for like the last 10-15 minutes and just let that golden brown look and the egg mixture to be cooked and then it looks like this. <laughs> Can you tell I'm hype? It looks so amazing. It's so easy to make, but all that's left to do is for us to try. Our egg souffles are all done, and y'all, somebody put this on the cover of a magazine, okay? Somebody wipe your girl, <laughs> because this looks amazing. Almost too amazing to touch, but you know we have to taste. So, let's get into it. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I don't even know which one to try. Obviously, I'm not going to eat all of these by myself, but I just need a taste and I'm so excited. The puff pastry cooked so perfectly, perfectly golden brown. The eggs are nice and fluffy. I really think that that roux makes a total difference. Mm, let's go. For real. It's so good and so flavorful. The chives that we added makes that crab flavor just come out even more. The onion powder, all those cheeses, it's so like creamy and like velvety, but the crispy crust on the puff pastry just gives it that perfect balance and texture. Obviously, I'm going for round two. <laughs> I'm so happy we did this. I'm not saying that I will never go back to Panera Bread because I love Panera Bread souffles, but at least we know that we can make this. Add our fly touches to it and it's gonna be just as good. And I think some will even say even better. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you like, subscribe, share, comment below. Tell me what you want to watch next, what you want me to make next. Let me know in the comments as well. And I'll catch you in another episode of Fly Eats Kitchen.